If there is one thing 2020 has taught us, it should be that the whole mindset most people have or had of disasters won't happen to me is like out the freaking window. I am not only prepared for <laughs> multiple disasters in my lifetime, but I'm like, I'm ready to cut it. Let's make some bug out bags. Hi, I am Sarah of Budget Girl, and today I am creating bug out bags for me and my family in case of a situation where we have to get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> Now, quick note, I do think emergency preparedness is extremely important. It gives me a lot of personal peace of mind and helps me feel better prepared for an emergency. And after this year, I am mentally prepared to have to encounter a lot more emergencies. And if you are too, please continue watching this video because I'm gonna go over some of the basics. Now, if you don't know what a bug out bag is, um, there are a billion different types, but the essential purpose of it is if an emergency happens, maybe you get a knock on the door and a fireman says you've got 10 minutes, minutes to evacuate, wildfires are moving this way, you already have something set up so that you can grab it and go and have a lot of the things that you're going to need to get through the next few days of your situation. I have actually two other videos in this emergency preparedness series where I talk about other realistic preparations. We're not prepping for the zombie apocalypse here. We're not prepping for the end of the world. We're prepping for things that actually happen and have all happened this year. <laughs> if you have to evacuate your home, if you have to stay in your home for an extended period of time, what are you going to do? We all face this at the beginning of the pandemic when uh, suddenly the grocery store shelves were clear and a lot of us hadn't been shopping in a while and we didn't have a lot of food in the home. We didn't have toilet paper. We didn't have supplies that we were worried that we needed. So those two videos go over two five gallon bucket kits that are extremely easy to make. One is the CDC recommended 72 hour food kit. I will link the ready.gov and CDC guidelines. They recommend every single American have 72 hours worth of food in their home, a certain amount of water and some things like an emergency crank radio and some other stuff. So we're going off of that. Some of those things are gonna be in this kit. Some of those things are going to be in the gallon bucket kits, which uh, those videos will be linked below. Some of them are in both because it's nice to have preps on preps just in case anything happens. I would certainly rather be over prepared than under. I also prepared most of the stuff with what I had in my home. I did not go out and purchase like a $300, $400 bug out bag, some fancy name brand one. I gathered things that were useful and would be useful in an emergency that I already had in my home. I did have to purchase like a few things, but I did those on a budget and I plan for those purchases and I will have a full list and even a shopping and bug out bag planning guide linked below, as well as those other two videos that I mentioned for the 72 hour food kit. It only costs $30. Feed your family for up to a week and good comfort food. We're not talking ration bars here. And then the second video is on an emergency cooking, cleaning, and hygiene kit in case you don't have access to heat or power or water cleaning supplies. Those two kits used in tandem will float you in case you are stuck in a place and you don't have the normal resources that we are all used to. So let's jump right into what is in my bug out bag and then we'll go into Jacob's because it's a little different. So my bug out bag is actually a uh, Jansport backpack that I've had since I was about 10. You can see it says Fire Scout here because uh, that was my Girl Scout name at Girl Scout camp where I went to for seven years and then it followed me through college. Jack Daniels. Um, I love Jansport, good backpack. I'm not gonna go buy like a Molly military backpack when I have something like this that will do just fine and I recommend you do the same. Most of us have stuff like this laying around. It's better to reutilize it than to purchase all new stuff. Let's go through some of the very basic things that I think you should keep in your bug out bag if you decide to create one. Once again, all of this stuff will be in a list down below and I even have a spreadsheet planner that is completely free that you can use. Uh, first thing is a water bottle. I actually have a little metal one with a carabiner that I got for free from something and I just hook this onto the side. Next, you're gonna need some flashlights. I actually have a couple of um, 
headlights here. These are really good. I've um, been in a lot of uh, post hurricane situations before and um, both as disaster response and having lived through Hurricane Katrina as a senior in high school who had to evacuate and uh, spend an entire semester somewhere else having not brought anything. So all of this is me uh, being better than I was at 17. Yeah, that's that's not a bad thing at all. These uh, little life gear glow lights are kind of cool as well because it's not a thing that the battery will give out on you. They actually have, um, I think a thousand hours or something of charge and they're only a few bucks at the store. So if you don't touch this bag for 10 years and I don't recommend you do that, but this will still work. Some of your batteries might have crapped out by then, but that's okay. I also have a uh, whistle, a couple of whistles on here, more flashlights. In the prepper community, uh, three is two, two is one, and one is none. So having multiple ways to light things is a very good idea. I also have some just basic knives. There's a little mini multi-tool in here. I have a backup knife and a box cutter. You never know when you're gonna need one of those. I also, and this is not required, but I have this really cool hatchet crowbar hammer thing that I actually found at a King Dollar for a buck 50. And I just thought it needed to go in my bug out bag. You can tell me below whether or not that's me dipping into the, the zombie prepper insanity, or if you also would like something that has this many uses. <laughs> Next up, I have several heat sources. I have matches, I have lighters, I have a sterno can, um, a two different little fire starters, another whistle, and some fire sticks. And these are just things that you can uh, break and use in light for heat, warmth, cooking, etc. Very, very cheap in the camping section. I've had these for a little bit. And I also have some other cooking fuel in the food section, which we'll get to in a second. I have some hand warmers, a first aid kit, spare masks and filters, and I also have some uh, I have some other masks in the first aid kit. This is from Pandemic. I have two different types of gloves in here. These are really good work gloves, and also for um, nitrile gloves or touching nasty stuff. Good work gloves are really good to have in case there is a disaster like a hurricane where sometimes branches blow down, everything like that. You don't want to have to do that with your bare hands. And I promise you, I have been in want of these more than once in my life. I have a water purifier straw. This is a gener generic, but you could get like a life straw. And this is in case you need to um, filter any water that might be contaminated. You could also use the boiling method, but this is one of the things I bought specifically for this kit because it was on that CDC list. I have an emergency pop-up tent, a poncho and some plastic visqueen because you never know when you might need to seal something off, give yourself some ground cover. These are all good things. And if say even I just got stranded on the side of the road one night, this could be useful in helping keep me warm in a disaster. I also have some rope, a little carabiner, bracelet with a whistle and a compass and this also has a little knife on it that's kind of cute it was cheap it's a easy thing to stick on there um less necessary and more just kind of cool hair ties very necessary all right i also have and this is a cdc guideline recommendation an emergency hand crank radio and flashlight this also has a charging thing in in it so you could charge your phone off of it and crank for power and i have a little solar flashlight slash charging station. And this could also be used to charge your phone off of or other things if you needed them. And the associated cords and wall plug, those are all in this little bag. That way in an emergency, if you forget to grab your phone cord, you're covered. <laughs> and an old ID. So this is expired, but I think having an ID on me just in this bag would be a nice thing to have. Even if it is expired shows that I am a uh, like legal US citizen and Texas person, just in case for some reason I don't have my purse. It's good to have backups. And I also have a bandana, endless uses a bandana. I also have this little hygiene kit that I, kit that I packed that has deodorant, some hand sanitizer, razors, a uh, little toothbrush, toothpaste kit, some tampons, tissues, a comb, shampoo and conditioner, and some uh, lip balm, because creature comforts, man. I have some baby wipes because this might be a nice way to clean up if you're not in a situation where you have a shower available. I have a raincoat, some flip flops. In here, I'm not gonna unpack it. I have a change of clothes, so like some leggings, 
a shirt, a little sweatshirt, and two or three pairs of underwear and socks. For food, so this could last me up to like three or four days if I needed, I have a little camping set. So in here there is a little silverware camping set, a little bowl, a, an extendable soap top, some more matches in a waterproof thing, a thing of butane, and a pot to cook it in. Very nice little system. And uh, this is what I use for camping and backpacking if we're not using a fire. So I uh, know how to use this equipment and I know it works. If I'm in a situation where I don't really have time to cook, I actually have three complete, and you might think these are gross, but these are just heat and eat meals. These are completely ready to do. This is a pre-cooked chicken fried rice. All you have to do is heat it up. Same with the complete meal. And then there's a little rice with vegetables, Chef Boyardee. And even faster, I have a little bag with some chicken salad, nuts, peanut butter, some beef jerky, and some other kind of uh, just protein filled rich food that could be eaten if necessary in an emergency situation. And then the very final thing, Rory and Maggie, our dogs don't have their own bug out bags. Rory did actually have a bug out bag at one point in time. And it was a cute little backpack that strapped around her, but I got rid of that eventually because I thought it was silly. Um, so I actually carry her stuff and Jacob carries Maggie's. I have a collapsible pet bowl, uh, some packets of wet dog food and a harness and leash. And those just all go in the very front of my backpack. All I would have to do is grab this, throw the leash on Rory, we're ready to go. Next, I'm gonna talk about what is different in Jacob's bag. We did decide to not duplicate everything. He has some of the basics, but he has more tools and uh, kind of weapons. And I have more of the cooking stuff so that we could kind of divide those responsibilities if we were having to leave together as a family. So here's Jacob's bug out bag. It is yet another Jansport uh, backpack that I actually got from a friend when she was moving and it works perfectly well. So Jacob and I have a lot of the same basics in there, but we decided to split up some items and kind of responsibilities based on our skill sets. And so we both didn't have to carry more weight than was necessary. So in his bag that is not in mine is a hammer, a machete. I owned a machete and I didn't know where else to put it. Uh, duct tape, a tape measure, a screwdriver set, a spare screwdriver, pliers, a wrench, scissors, zip ties, super glue, utility knife, and blades. And that's because he would be more inclined to fix things or fashion stuff together if say maybe uh, something was damaged from a storm. And this would just kind of give him some options and us as a family, a few more options as far as uh, what resources we had. So because he's carrying that stuff, um, I have things in my bag that I showed you that he doesn't have in his. So he doesn't have a first aid kit, a cooking set. He has a mess kit set. So something he could eat off of and potentially cook with, but he doesn't have the actual stove. He doesn't have the radio. He doesn't have a lot of the fire starting stuff. I'm the fire bug in years of Girl Scouts. <laughs> um, though he does have just like some lighters and matches because that's a very basic thing. I also keep this tent, the uh, life straw. I didn't order two of those. And I also have some rope, though I might just put that in his bag. And then he has stuff that is geared towards Maggie instead of Rory, because that's how we'll divide the dog responsibility. If only one of us is here, we're gonna grab both of the dogs, of course. But if both of us are here, he has stuff in his bag. So he has some food for her, a spare collar and leash and some uh, pet waste bags. Okay, so these are a little heavy, but here are our bug out bags. And they actually go in this closet right here. You can see down below, those are my two five gallon bucket kits. We keep our cooler in here, we keep two big packs of water, and we keep some more water up top, as well as some other extra supplies. So this is easy to access and where they go. And if we ever need them, they're right there. So those are our family's bug out bags. I would love to know what you think. Do you have a bug out bag? Is there anything you think we should add to ours? Any kind of emergency situations that we are missing or not prepared for? I am always thrilled to learn from other people who like to be prepared. And if you haven't done it yet, I highly encourage you to take some steps towards preparedness. You don't necessarily have to create some bug out bags, but maybe just starting with that FEMA, the FEMA recommended list and getting some spare food and water and flashlights and other things that your family might need in case of an emergency, consider this your sign. 
to do it before the next disaster. This one's again 2020, y'all. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching. I would love it if you liked it. If you like prepping for this type of financial content, it's a uh, little thing that I'm interested in. So these are, this is not the content of all of my videos, but it's kind of mindset that I have. And if you're brand new here, please subscribe. We do frugal stuff every single week. Happy prepping, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.